Okay, so in this video we're looking at 2015 SEC Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths Paper 2 uh, and it begins off with a proof. So if you haven't learned this already I'd recommend going to the proofs playlist on this YouTube channel and learning off the eight trig identities that you have to learn off. They're really worth it, like it's very easy marks when you actually have them learned. This is a 15 mark question. So I've already proved this in another video and I'll link to it in the description, but quickly, um, I'll run through it really quickly, but you should really go to the other uh, video for a step-by-step -step guide. So what is tan A plus B? Well, tan theta is defined as sine theta over cos theta. So tan A plus B is sine a plus b over cos a plus b okay. from that you want to go to your log tables now that is in your log tables tan a is sine a over cos a so tan theta is sine theta over cos theta in the top left hand corner here okay so uh, tan a plus b is sine a plus b over cos a plus b. Now we're looking for what sine a plus b. So in the top left hand corner here, we have sine a plus b and we have cos a plus b. So it's simply replacing them. So the top line is going to be sine a cos b, cos a sine b. Sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Sine a cos b, cos a sine b. Cos A sine B, perfect. And the bottom one is going to be cos A, cos B, cos A, cos B, minus sine A, sine B. And we include this as one big fraction. Now, I always say you want to aim for minus 1 in the bottom left-hand corner. Why do I want to aim for minus 1 in the bottom left-hand corner? Well, because there's minus 1 in the bottom left-hand corner. How do I make this section minus 1? Or well, 1, excuse me. How do I make it 1? Well, I would need to multiply it by 1 over itself. Remember, x by 1 over x is equal to 1. y by 1 over y is equal to 1. So I need to multiply it by 1 over itself. But I can't just multiply this whole number by 1 over cos a cos b. I need to multiply it by 1. 1 is the most versatile number because 1 could be written as 2 over 2, 1 is 3 over 3, and 1 is half over a half. So I can write it as any fraction over any fraction, so I do that. Sine A cos B plus cos A sine B all over cos A cos B minus sine A sine b and I'm going to multiply it on the top line a fraction that's cos a cos b 1 over another fraction cos a cos b so now I'm multiplying one big fraction by another big fraction it just so happens that on the top line I have a fraction here as well so how do I multiply fractions it's top by top bottom by bottom so I get sine a cos b all over cos a cos b plus cos a sine b all over cos a cos b cos a cos b and I know it's starting to look a little long but it all simplifies really quickly so stick with it you're really nearly done And as I said, if you want a more in-depth um, video on it, do look in the description where it's linked. How does this simplify? That cancels. Cos B divided by cos B is 1. Cos A divided by cos A is 1. Cos A divided by cos A is 1. Cos B divided by cos B is 1. So what's sine A over cos A? Sine A over cos A is tan A. Sine B over cos B is tan B. I get 1 in this section, tan A, tan B, and that's it, proved. So there's 15 marks going for that, which is really quite generous. You should really know that. 
Next question then. How many answers should I have? Well, for these questions, there's always double this. So there should be six answers. And we know we're going to using n is equal to 0, 1, and 2. So always the number smaller than 3. So if, if this number was 5, we'd use n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we know we're using degrees. Okay, we're looking for where sine is positive. So what quadrants is sine positive in? Sine is positive in the first. So it goes all sine, tan, cos. Sine is positive in the first quadrant. So this is 3x. Or we're looking for it in the second quadrant, where sine is also positive, and this is 3x. So the purple one, 3x is equal to sine inverse, root 3 over 2. 3x is equal to 60 degrees. 3x is equal to 60 plus n360. Now I'm adding on degrees, I'm adding on a full circle or n full circles. And x is equal to 20 plus n120. From this point, I need to go and also find the blue angle, 3x. Does the blue angle look like it's bigger or smaller than 180 degrees? It looks smaller, so that's why I'm subtracting this reference angle which is here, it's the same size as the purple 3x. Uh, so I'm getting 3x is equal to 120, but I need to add on my n360. So then x is equal to six, mm, x is equal to 40 degrees plus n120. And now I use, well, how many answers do I want? I want six answers, and I'm gonna use n is zero, one, and two. n is equal to zero, x is equal to 20 degrees, x is equal to 40 degrees, n is equal to 1, x is equal to, what would you get here if you subbed in 1? You'd get 140 degrees. What would you get here if you subbed in 1? you get 160 degrees. n is equal to 2, x is equal to, what would you get here if you subbed in 2? you get 260 degrees, and what would you get here if you subbed in two? X is equal to 280 degrees. And that's our answer done. Out of matter of curiosity, if you went and used X, N is equal to three, N is equal to three, you'd get X is equal to 380 degrees, and X is equal to 400 degrees. And why we do not count those is because they're not between 0 and 360. So you would not use n is equal to uh, 3. Okay, so really nice question. There's 10 marks going for that. And like you should definitely be getting that. That's a very, very nice question. And above that with the tan, very nice as well. Hopefully you found the video useful, and as I said, if you're looking for a more detailed explanation of the tan, uh, look for the link in the description.